Welcome everyone, today we have a look at how to create your own custom brushes and how to make animations with animated brushes in ProMotion NG. A brush can not only be a round or rectangular brush tip. It can be any portion of pixels. To simply grab an image portion as a brush we can use the rectangular brush grab tool. It can be activated with shortcut B. Once the tool is active, we select the portion we want to grab on the canvas with the left mouse button. By default the pixels from the active layer are grabbed. If you grab the brush with the right mouse button then it's cut off the layer. After grabbing a brush the paint dotted tool is automatically activated because you typically stamp the custom brush at different positions rather than drawing continuous strokes. To go back to a single pixel brush for drawing you can just hit the dot key. With the shortcut D, you can switch back to the Paint tool. Besides the Rectangular Brush Grab tool, there are also other tools to grab a brush in different ways. The Freeform Brush Grab tool lets you define an area to be grabbed just like you would draw a shape with the Freeform Solid tool that we used in an earlier tutorial. The Magic Wand Brush Grab tool picks coherent pixels in different ways like based on a single color and a tolerance as known with the fill tool. The larger the tolerance, the more pixels with similar colors are grabbed as well. Another option to define the limit of pixels to grab is second color. The tool stops at pixels that have the currently selected second drawing color. This is useful if you want to pick some object that is placed on a single colored background. You select the color used for the background as second color and click on a pixel in the object. The third option, which is the default, grabs all non-transparent pixels starting from the pixel you click on. Once a custom brush is created, you can place the brushes into the brush container for later use. The portions may be taken from different layers and once they are in the brush container, you can pick them from there and use them where you want. Let's go back to the Rectangular Brush Grab tool to explore its options. You can select if you want to grab only from the current layer as we have just done or you can define which layers to grab from, all, selected or visible. If you grab from multiple layers then the brush will contain all layers merged. They are not kept separate in the brush. We select multiple layers with holding, control, key and click on the layers we want to grab pixels from. Then we just grab the brush as we did before. You can see that the brush contains the pixels of the selected layers. The other modes work the same way, but use all layers that are there or just the visible ones. When grabbing pixels as a brush then you can also define what pixels are to be made transparent. By default the transparency is taken from the layer definition. So, pixels being transparent in the layer are also transparent in the brush. Typically you use the same transparent color index for all layers which is what we used so far. By default it's just the first color in the color palette. For certain use cases you might use different transparent colors in different layers. This is not a typical use case but can be required for when creating graphics for legacy hardware. No transparency, just picks all pixels, completely ignoring transparency. The transparent color index is used as opaque pixels as well. If you place such a brush then it's stamped down along with the transparent pixels which will then erase the pixels you stamp on. This is a kind of replace draw mode. The mode, second color, is what we have also sawn with the magic wand brush grab tool. It just makes those pixels transparent that are using the currently selected second drawing color. This way you can grab pixel portions from within colored areas without also grabbing the color that is used for the area around. With this mode we can easily grab the nose without also picking the skin. The transparency mode auto works similar to the second color mode. The only difference is that you don't explicitly have to define which color is supposed to be the background it will try to guess it. When you select the area to grab, it will check the pixels of all four corners of the selection. If they share the same color then this is assumed to be ignored during grab. I now use the right mouse button to show 
that also with multiple layers the pixels taken into the brush are cut off the layers they were taken from. By default a brush is always hold with the cursor in its center point. But you can also define other brush handle positions. The option, Assign Brush Handle, will set the brush handle to the position where you stop grabbing. This can help to place brushes with the respective corner at a specific place. Trim will remove any outer transparent pixels from the brush after you grab it. This will reduce it to the opaque pixels. When you don't trim then the brush size is exactly as large as the selection area. You can see the difference here in the brush container preview images. When you have a custom brush then you can easily apply a couple of functions like flipping with the keyboard shortcuts X and Y. Z will rotate by 90 degrees. Scaling with shift together with plus and an minus keys is possible the same way as with standard brushes. With shift plus B, you can revert all changes and return to the brush you initially grabbed. You will find lots of other functions for brushes in the menu brush. You can even load them from or save them to files. Now let me show you one of the benefits of custom brushes. I use the pane dotted tool with a larger dot space and can easily place these tufts of grass with a stroke or using single dots. During placement I can quickly adjust the size or flip the brush. Then I can even pick a larger grass portions and use it for placing it somewhere else. Brushes can also be used to store assets for any type of later use in the same project or other ones. For example with my new game, Oscar, I can quickly pick some character and place it into some background art to see if they work well together. But something to keep in mind is the color palette. A brush uses the color palette from the image it was grabbed from. If you use such a brush in a different place with a different color palette then you will see that colors look wrong at first. Oscar looks green when I use it in this project. This is because the pixels in the brush which are indexes into the color palette now point to our project color palette which uses different colors at these positions. The project where we took the brush from uses a completely different color palette. To fix this, we need to make the brush use colors from our current color palette that come as close as possible to the colors that are actually used when grabbing the brush. One way to do this is using functions in the color palette management area. There we select the colors in the palette that we want to be used in the brush when finding best matching colors. You could limit it to a certain range, but for now we just select all of them. Then we remap the brush colors to that selection. Now Oscar looks good again, because the best matching colors are now used from the current color palette. If you don't want to restrict the colors that may be used in the brush then you can also use functions from menu, colors, remap colors. Another advantage of custom brushes is that you can pick objects and place them in an aligned way. I can draw a single brick and then place it, so that it looks like a piece of a wall. Then I grab a larger wall portion that is a square. With a right click I can quickly erase parts that I don't need. Then I use the paint dotted tool with the option brush size aligned. When I draw now then the brush is placed side by side building a larger wall. Make sure that you correctly align the brush when you start drawing this way. Again, with the right mouse button you can quickly erase elements of the brush size that you don't need. Now our wall looks a bit boring and we would like to have more varying bricks. You can easily create a new project from an active brush with menu, file, new project, create from brush. The new project is just as large as the brush and uses its color palette. To create some variations of the brick we add some new frames to the project, not to make a real animation but just to have copies of the bricks. I now modify the bricks to look different in every frame. Although it's not an animation, we can animate the frames just for fun. Let's select some low animation speed like 6 frames per second. Now we play back the animation and see the varying brick portions. 
We want to use these brick variations on our wall and there is a trick to speed that up. Instead of using each single variation and stamp them down randomly in our wall, we create an anim brush. An anim brush is an animated brush, which means that it can contain multiple frames. To grab an anim brush, we use the brush grab tool as we did before. There you can find options for anim brushes. We have 5 frames overall and so we want to grab these and we make sure that the grab anim brush option is enabled. Now we grab the brush, but when we do, we also need to hold the alt key. This enables grabbing of multiple frames. Normally the alt key will enable the pixel movement tool. That's why there is the extra grab anim brush option. Only if this is enabled then the pixel mover is deactivated. After grabbing the brush you can now see in the brush size display that it has 5 frames. If we place it to the brush container, then we can also differ such an anim brush from normal brushes because they show an A symbol. Back at our wall we can now again draw the bricks. As you can see the frames of the anim brush switch with every brush stamp action. Without this feature it would have taken us much more time to create such organic variations on the wall. Actually, the wall was not meant to look like this with all the bricks. Instead we want to make the wall to only show bricks where plaster is missing. So, I move the bricks below my real wall painting. We create some holes into the plaster by erasing pixels with the right mouse button. This will make the bricks appear there. For a better look we add some extra pixels to have a visual light and shadow effect at the edges. With Anim Brush we can do a lot of other things, and I will show you some of the basics now. This is Oscar, the main character of my upcoming adventure game and we have animations of him walking into different directions. The animation portion where he is walking to the right has 6 frames. As we did before, we will grab these frames as an Anim Brush. Please notice that there are different ways to select the frames that are to be grabbed as an Anim Brush. Besides giving the number in the options you can also select frames on the timeline. This will override the number of frames. As a test we can stamp each animation frame of the brush side by side. The anim brush advances through its frames automatically after each placement. In my background drawings project I have made all layers to use the static image option. That means, even if I have multiple frames in the project, these layers always show the same frame. Other layers can be animations, for example the Oscar walking layer. When you have an anim brush then you can go through the anim brush frames with the keys 7 and 8. With the paint dotted tool, you can use the option anim painting. If this is enabled and you hold the alt key when stamping down the brush, then not only the anim brush will advance to the next frame, our project will do too. See the frame position on the timeline after each step. By the way, I changed the keyboard shortcut for the loop forward function from the key with number 4 to the spacebar, because I rather have it that way. That means, to play the animation I hit the spacebar. You can hit the 4 key or just use the playback buttons. You can modify any shortcut in the menu, file, keyboard shortcuts. Because there are lots of shortcuts, you should use the search function to find a specific one. Oscar is walking on the same place. I remove all the changes to go a step further. We now stamp the frames to different horizontal positions. We can see Oscar now walking from left to right. It's not a smooth movement yet, because we placed the animation frames too far from each other. We remove it again and enable the light table. The light table will show kind of ghost images for previous or next frame contents. After stamping down the first frame, we advance to the next one and see a green shape of where we stamped the brush in the frame before. We are at frame 2 but also see the shape from frame 1. This way we can now better place the brush in the next frame so that the foot positions match. A red shape appears for the next frame. 
let's have a quick look at the light table settings dialog without going deeper into it at the moment. For every previous or next frame you can define its visibility strength and currently the previous and next frame are shown with 50% opacity each. Frames going more backward or forward are switched off, so we see only one green and one red shape. When playing back the animation then it looks much smoother now. But there is another way to make Oscar walk with much less effort. For this we switch to the line tool using shortcut V. There we use a dotting mode that draws N dots as a line and use the value 13 for the value N. When drawing the line we hold the Alt key. It will enable the anim painting. With anim painting, the frames are switched with every brush that is stamped down. In the line preview you can see that the anim brush switches the frame with every dot that would be placed. When we now draw the line the anim painting places one brush frame on one layer frame. And the result is similar to what we have done before with manual brush placement. The same thing can be done with the mode to place a brush dot at every nth pixel. And as you can see, we have a smooth walking Oscar. Of course, you need to use the correct pixel distance matching your animation. Another thing you can do with an anim brush is stamping all frames of the brush through the frames of your project. This is basically what we did some steps before, manually. Select the Paint Dotted tool and activate Stamp Anim Brush. Go to the first frame of the project. Now you can hold the Control and the Alt key and place the brush. All the brush frames are placed framewise into the project layer. Oscar is again walking at the same position. Let's now pick just another animation sequence from Oscar to play around with it. We increase the size to make a huge Oscar. Then we stamp it down again by holding Ctrl and Alt. Now the huge Oscar is walking as well. There are also some extra settings for anim brushes. Hit A to open the settings or use the corresponding menu entry in Menu Brush. You can select between different playback modes for when you use anim painting. By default it's a forward playback. But you could also let it animate backward, don't animate at all, ping pong or using random frames. The random option could be used when having an anim brush with different objects that are to be placed with no order to have some organic pattern. For example, if you have different blades of grass. You could then easily create larger lawn backgrounds. Or with our brick wall, we can now draw another one to make the brick variants being placed more random and not in a serial and repeating way as it was done initially. There are also some more settings for the anim brush like the animation step. If we enter a 2 then every second anim brush frame would only be used. To understand what this means, let's again grab a walk animation and place it frame by frame. Every second frame is omitted. The current frame setting defines which frame is currently active within the anim brush. It allows you to quickly navigate within the brush frames before using the brush on the canvas. The last option is Rewind after drawing, and it will make the anim brush jump back to the first frame after you used it for drawing. You see that after we placed frame 4 it will switch back to frame 1. All these features can help you to achieve different goals quickly when it comes to animations. As another example I will now create some falling blossom leaves to our tree. I first create some rotating leaf in a separate animation. It's just single pixels of different red shades moving in a circle. We have 8 frames and we grab it as anim brush. Now we use the line tool again to make the leaves move in lines off the tree. We use the anim painting mode that will switch the frame after every single dot when drawing the line. 
The line mode is dot every nth pixel, and to have a medium speed we define that the distance of two leave dots is 9 pixels. To activate anim painting, we hold the alt key and draw the lines one by one. You can see that with every frame the leaves move with 9 pixels per frame along the line and because we have an anim brush that has multiple frames, they animate as well. The more lines we draw the more blossom leaves we have. That's all for now. The next video is all about selections, moving canvas portions and grid usage. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in this series then please like and subscribe.